Hello, this is Dean. Today we're talking about how to choose algorithms on the Korg Op6 Altered FM synth. So what we're covering today assumes that you're coming from a subtractive synthesizer background where you're familiar with oscillators, filters, envelope generators and LFOs. The Op6 has six operators and each of these is capable of providing a different method of synthesis. You can also interconnect these together in various ways to make new synth architectures. The word algorithm it has a particular meaning in conventional FM, but in the altered FM world of the OP6 it's much broader because every operator can have a different method of synthesis beyond conventional FM. So to start with a subtractive synth example, algorithm 32 is a good place to start. So here's a patch that's based on algorithm 32. By looking at the algorithm diagram here, you can see that there are six operators across the bottom. And if you look closely, there are little dots on each one of them to tell you which is which, one, two, three, four, five, six. Because all of these are across the bottom, it means that they appear at the audio output. So a reasonable question that you might frame at this point is, why would I not want to hear them? Why would I not want to hear them appear at the output? You'll see that in some algorithms, these operators have very different responsibilities. They can behave like LFOs, they can behave like inputs to effects, and a spectrum of other things. All of the backlights across the faders here are lit up red, and that tells us that each operator is directly audible. The knobs here can control the frequencies of each operator, and we'll come back to that a bit later on. We can turn the operators up or down in volume using these faders. In this example, we're using the OP6 Altered FM architecture essentially to make a six oscillator subtractive synth. So each of these oscillators is set to a sawtooth wave. And if we press the mode button at this point, we can step through seeing what wave is assigned to each operator. There are 23 waveforms to choose from all up, uh, which includes some sines, squares, saws, triangles, a spectrum of additive waveforms, and three noise sources. To continue with this example, I'm going to choose an additive triangle for operator 1, and I will choose uh, an additive saw for operator 2. You can hear that these sounds are quite muted. There are two other controls called feedback and width that apply to some of these operators that allow you to change the wave shape in various ways. I won't go into detail about these today, but I will apply some. There's a set of filters under the filter button over here. And at the moment we're using the default low pass 12 dB filter, but there are 11 filters to choose from. Uh, so for example, here's a, there's a Great Poly 6 emulation. In this example, you can hear that this filter has been controlled by an envelope. And in this case on the screen, you can see that it's envelope generator too. So over here under the mod button, there are three envelopes and three LFOs. Now these are sent by default to certain locations, but there is a virtual patch mechanism, a kind of modulation matrix that lets you send these to a lot of other places as well. In addition to these overall envelopes, the global envelopes, each operator also has its own envelope. So in this case, we'll go to the operator level EG button and you can see that there's a, a graph of an ADSR here. So let's listen to operator 1. I'm giving this quite a long fade in. And a bit of release. And maybe we'll do something similar to operator 2. Quite a long decay, low sustain, bit of release. So what we've seen so far is using the OP6 altered FM architecture 
to create this subtractive virtual analog style synth. Uh, importantly, it's a big one. There are six oscillators. There are nine envelopes, if you count the six local ones plus the three global ones. There are three LFOs. There are 11, 11 switchable filter types. Uh, and there's a flexible virtual patch system for sending envelopes, LFOs, and lots of other things to various destinations across the synth. The point here isn't exactly to show you in detail how to create a subtractive synth, but using the altered FM architecture, you can create one if you need one. The algorithm represents the configuration of these operators, and in algorithm 32, every operator is behaving much like a single oscillator, although it, there's a large selection of waveforms and there are ways of editing or wave shaping that sound. So let's make a variation. We'll go to the algorithm button and we'll go to algorithm 31. So we can see several changes here. There are still five operators across the bottom, still five red operators here, but one's turned purple and that's the one operator 6 which is now on top of operator 5. In this particular case, what that's telling us is that operator 6 is modulating operator 5. And this relates to what I said earlier about these operators being audible at the output, and this one isn't because it now has a modulating role. I'm going to turn the effects off here, um, and the filter, and I'll move us to single voice unison mode. So. What we're going to do here is listen to operators 5 and 6. So operator 5 here, let's move that to be a sine wave. Operator 6 will make that a sine wave as well. So these two operators, 5 and 6, they're now engaged in conventional FM. Operator 6 is modulating operator 5. The principle behind conventional FM is actually pretty straightforward at its core. So I've turned operator 5 up here. I've got it as a sine wave. I've got operator 6 as a sine wave. I'm going to turn the frequency of operator 6 down very low. And I'm going to fade it in. So what we're hearing here is the effect of operator 6 modulating operator 5, and to all intents and purposes this is really behaving like an LFO. However, when we start to raise the frequency of operator 6, we'll hear a difference. When the modulating operator gets fast enough, it starts creating new harmonics rather than behaving like vibrato. <laughs> What I'd like to do in this particular example is just get those two operators to make something like an acoustic guitar sound. So what I'll do is I'll set this at operator 5, I'll set at 0.5, operator 6 I'll set at 1.5. OK. And we'll use the local envelope for operator 5 here to make it a bit shorter. I'll do a little bit of the same with operator 6. So the key point so far is that we have this algorithm, which in this case is algorithm 31, and that's giving us operators 5 and 6 that are participating in a conventional FM relationship to give us this. And we've got operators 1 and 2, which are behaving like single oscillators. Let's go to algorithm 29, we'll make another variation. So the algorithm is best viewed as a sequence of stacks of operators. We've got operator 1, we've got operator 2, we've got operators 3 and 4 which we'll come back to, and we've got operators 5 and 6 which are giving us the acoustic guitar effect. I'm going to change operator 3 to use one of the altered FM modes called filter FM. 
So up here is our mode, and so far we've just been looking at normal conventional FM. Let's go for filter FM. I don't want to deep dive into this right now, but here's the summary version. Any operator is capable of hosting its own filter, which could be one of these 12 different filter types. This is completely separate from the global filters we saw earlier. Just to demonstrate what filter FM really does, we'll leave operator 3 at being a sawtooth wave, and we'll make operator 4 a sine wave. So here's operator 3 by itself. But what we're going to do now is we're going to use operator 4 to modulate that cutoff frequency. I'm going to turn operator 4's pitch down really low. Okay, so that sounds like an LFO modulating a filter, and that's because this operator 4 is at a very low pitch. As I raise the pitch of operator 4, it's going to create a new timbre. That's one key aspect of filter FM. When the modulating operator gets fast enough, it starts creating new harmonics, rather than behaving like an LFO moving the filter cutoff frequency. So filter FM gives a different set of sound possibilities to conventional FM, and subjectively it can sound quite a bit warmer and kind of fuzzier than conventional FM. Just to explore this a tiny bit further, let's set operator 3 to be a sine wave. Operator 4 is already a sine wave. We'll go for a bandpass filter. I'll move the cutoff down a bit. I'll add some resonance. I'm going to use operator 4 to modulate this quite gently, but I'm also going to set operator 4 to be one of the additive waveforms. Let's try this. I'm going to brighten this up operator using the feedback and width controls. I'm also going to slow the whole thing down a little bit. So let's go to operator 3, go to its local envelope. Give it some release. And we'll do something similar to operator 6. Add some release. One thing I'm keen to do here is add a little bit of detuning to operator 4. It has a really great effect on filter FM. I think I need to adjust these frequencies. Let's leave operator 3 at 0.5 and bring this one up. at least some of them. I'll give it some reverb and some delay. And I'm also keen to add some unison voices. So at the cost of polyphony, this doubles the number of voices played under each key. It's a little bit excessively detuned. 
I'll reduce the stereo spread a little bit. Okay, so this patch isn't going to win us any awards. Nevertheless, we've seen that we can use the OP6 Altered FM architecture to create a patch where different components use different types of synthesis. We've got operators 5 and 6, giving conventional FM to give us the acoustic guitar component. We've got 1 and 2, giving us a single, or well, they're working as single oscillators, giving us a kind of slow string sound. And we've got operators 3 and 4 doing filter FM, one of the altered FM modes to create this. What we've done today is an example of how you might choose one algorithm, start with one algorithm, and then move to a different algorithm. Because it really depends what the individual components of the sound are that you're trying to create. So in our example today, we started with one of the presets called Filtered Saws, which uses algorithm 32 and effectively gives us a six oscillator subtractive synthesizer. Then we moved to algorithm 31, and the aim of that was to introduce two operators doing a conventional FM to give us that acoustic guitar effect. And then finally we moved off to algorithm 29, which gave us another two operators, and this time we used one of the altered FM modes to create filter FM. So this is an example of how you can start with one algorithm and move through different algorithms depending on what you're trying to create. I hope this helps you when you're deciding how to choose algorithms on the Korg Op 6 Altered FM synth.